Hi there, it's Jeff from RV Parenting, and this is another solo one. And if you're following our videos, you may have seen a previous video I did on the younger brother of this guy. This is a tire compressor for RVs that's designed to quickly and easily fill up the tires in your RV. After all, if you just take it to a gas station, assuming there's even enough space for you to get into the gas station by the air pump, it might take forever if you can even do it at all at the air pump at a typical gas station. It might not be powerful enough for the giant tires that a lot of RVs have. I used the 400p RV, that's the young cousin of this machine in a previous video you can see that on my channel it had mediocre results in all honesty on my RV and the reason for that is some confusion between their website and the Amazon listing their Amazon page doesn't say anything about tire size it does list the 400 and the 450 which is what this one is but it doesn't say anything about what the difference is really between the two other than it does hint that you can use this one longer before before you risk overheating and needing to shut it down for a while. This one can go up to 40 minutes. I believe the 400 can only do about 20 minutes. However, on their website, it actually does say that the 400 is only good for tires up to 35 inches, mine are 37. Now, I did email the company and they said they thought the other one would work just fine, even though my tires were a little larger. However, if you watch that video, you'll see that it takes forever just to get it from 80 to 90 PSI. And my tires are actually rated for 110. And so I might want to get it a little higher than 90. And it just didn't seem like it was going to be possible with the other machine. So I returned that one and I got this one to see what this one can do. This one, according to their website, is rated for tires up to 42 inches. Obviously, mine are not that big, so I'm hoping this one's going to do a great job. So let's get it assembled. Let's put it into action so you can see and so I can see if this is worth getting if you have a, an RV with large tires just like I do. I did assemble the unit in the other video, but I'm going to do this one here just in case you haven't seen that one. Comes in this handy carrying case, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to put this one together just like I did in the previous video. And if you've already seen that one, you can fast forward if you want to. Okay, so this is the main unit right here. It gets power by connecting these to battery terminals, just like you would jumper cables. The first thing we have to do is connect the air filter to this. To do that, we're going to remove this little red plug and we don't need it from that point forward. This is where the air filters are inside of this thing. I'm going to show them to you because they already are inside of here. I didn't have to install them. There's a gray one and a white one underneath. Just screw that back together and screw that in here on the end, just like that. No need for pliers or anything, just hand tighten that. It does come with extra air filters too, so it's a good idea to check every now and then and make sure those still look relatively clean. The next step is going to be to attach the hoses. And there are two of these kind of coiled 30-foot hoses. You can connect the two together. I have a 34-foot Numar and it's going to require both cables hooked together to give me a total of 60 feet. All of the connectors work the same way. Pull back here and then just put it on the end like there and then let go. And then to connect the two cables together, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to pull back on this gold connector, insert the silver one all the way and then let go. Now the next step on the end of our 60 foot cable is to connect this tire gun. And it's got a trigger and a tire gauge that goes up to 160 PSI. That's really useful because while a lot of us might have a tire gauge in our car, it's not going to go up anywhere near as high as that. And most RV tires need at least 80, if not well over 100 PSI. So it's handy to already have this built in. And we're going to install this by pulling back on here and pushing that in just like that and letting go. It's locked into place now. And the last step is going to be to connect the tire gauge here on the end of this and the unit comes with two different options. There's a flexible hose and there's a hard steel one. And this one's kind of nice because you can connect the 
to the tire stem either on this side or on this side depending upon the angle of it. Sometimes if you have the double tires in the back of a large RV it can be really hard to get to the tire stems on that secondary tire. So this gives you the option of doing it either way. So this is going to be the one I'm going to use and it comes with this little adapter. It's normally just when you first buy it it's kind of attached with this cable tie and it just kind of screws into the end here like that and then we're going to connect to the end of this in the exact same way we've been connecting everything else. Pull back on that, snap it into place. Now we're ready to go. To inflate the tires, of course, we just pull this trigger, but the next step is going to be to connect these to the batteries. So let's do that now. Okay, so I've got the hood of my RV popped open and you can see the battery. Now, you will notice if you saw that previous video of mine that the other video, I didn't connect it to this battery. I connected it to the house battery. And the chassis battery, of course, which is what you're looking at here, powers everything that has to do with the driving of the vehicle, whereas the house battery or the coach battery powers everything to do with living in the RV. I didn't really think there would be much of a difference of the two, but just in case that was part of the problem I experienced previously, I wanted to try this battery just in case. So again, just like you would with jumper cables, we're going to connect the red and the black to the red and the black on the battery. So I'm going to start with the black right here, and I'm going to take this little plastic cover off, trying to find a good way to, good place to get it connected. That's the black one. The cord on the, for the battery, um, for the chargers is probably about, uh, I'm guessing it's about 10 feet long. I wish it was a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. I've got that connected, and now we'll start to fill up the tires and see how it does. So here you see the unit. I'm gonna show you how to turn it on. I don't have the engine on yet, but I do plan to turn it on while I'm using this, just so I don't drain that battery. The power switch is right here, and once I flip it, it's gonna come on. It's gonna make a little bit of noise, but I want you to hear that it's relatively quiet and doesn't bounce around all over the place despite the power. So let's flip the switch. And you can also see that I've got power here as well. Now, before I get going, like I mentioned, I'm gonna start the engine. That's gonna make things a little noisy, but it's gonna make sure I don't drain down that battery in the process of filling up my tires. So let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, so there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, the machine itself, the base machine, doesn't always vibrate and make noise once you flip that power switch on. It does initially and then it stops and then as you use this, it'll come back on periodically as needed. So don't be alarmed if you flip the switch, you hear it, and then 10 seconds later it stops making noise if you haven't started filling up air yet. So first thing I'm going to do, of course, is take this tire stem cover off, and I'm going to verify the maximum PSI on my tires. I know on the front ones it's 110, and it is indeed 110 here also. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of connect this and see what I'm reading. Looks like it's just below 80, so I need it to get quite a bit higher. I want to probably get it close to 100. Like I said, the maximum PSI is 110. So let's see how long it takes to get from 80 to 100. It's already at 85, and it's been only really about a minute. So right out of the gate, I feel like this is working better than the 400 PRV did. All right, we're now at 90, and I'd say it's been just a little over two minutes probably. So we're moving pretty quick here, especially compared to the previous model that I tried. The only thing that would be nice and helpful would be if, if there was a way for this trigger to lock in place, kind of like what you see at a gas pump. That way I don't have to squeeze it the entire time because your hand does get a little bit tired and I've got six tires to fill up. All right, we're now at 95 PSI. So it's gone about 15 PSI in only really about three minutes or so. 
So as you saw there, it took less than five minutes to go from 80 PSI, actually a little south of that, up to 100 PSI. That's great news for me. I have six tires and I can live with about four minutes per tire, assuming they're all that low. They probably are but it works much better for my size of RV tire. Again, mine are 37 inches. That works much better than the 400P RV did that I tested out in my previous video. So I think both of them though work great depending upon the size of tire that you have. So if you have tires that are up to 35 inches, I think the 400P RV, which is slightly cheaper, is probably gonna work just fine. I do think though, if you have anything bigger than that, or maybe even right at 35, get the 450 PRV. It's just going to work a whole lot better. It's going to be faster. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the 450 PRV can go 40 minutes before you have to shut it down due to risk of overheating. I'm not going to come anywhere near 40 minutes, even with six tires on this thing. I'm going to link to both of them down below. That way you can check them out and decide which one is right for you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It sends a great signal to YouTube, and then they're going to show it to more RV owners just like you. Then of course, smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. We're putting out at least two videos a week right now, and I know there's going to be something we cover that's going to help you. But for now, we'll see you in the next video.